I agree 100 percent with the courts. We should, in that case, we should open it up. These are two people radicalized who were given a wedding party by the people that they killed. There's something going on. We have to be very careful. We have to be very vigilant. But to think that Apple won't allow us to get into her cell phone, who do they think they are? There are serious problems with forcing a private person to work against their will. That's called slavery. Oh, come if on. The FBI oh, wants to go out, you know, if the FBI wants to go out and hire people, even hire them away from Apple, it has every ability to do that. But to force Apple to do something against its will at its own expense is prohibited by the Constitution. Whoa, seriously opposing views from Nadal and, of course, our very own Judge Andrew Napolitano regarding Apple. Remember, last night a California judge ordered the tech giant to assist the FBI uh, by hacking into an iPhone but not just any iPhone. Remember, they want help to unlock that iPhone that was used by San Bernardino shooter Syed Farouk. Uh, today, Apple CEO Tim Cook came out hard, said, listen, he's going to contest this order to protect everyone's privacy. So is hacking in the name of national security justified? My panel is back. Joining us, Brian Dean Wright as well. Brian, I want to go to you first. Uh, who's got this right, the judge or, or the Donald? At the end of the day, it's a tough call, but I'll tell you what. Uh, uh, privacy doesn't do you much good if you're dead. So we have to ensure that the homeland is safe, it is protected. Uh, unquestionably, we have to consider civil liberties, there's no doubt about it. But I'll tell you what, what if Tim Cook had someone in his life die? And the police came to him and said, if you could just open this up, we could tell you who the murderer is. I think Tim Cook would have a very different answer to that question than he uh, is giving today. Judge, uh, if, this was, uh, if this case uh, was before you? How do you think you would rule? I, I side with uh, Judge Napolitano on this, not just because we're judges and we all side together, but I think... That is it, like the fourth it, rule of the five-rule handbook. It's down there, but it, it does count, yeah. yes, absolutely. Uh, no, you know, there's a difference between voluntarily, as Brian points out, saying, uh, you know what, I want to open this iPhone because it has information relating to my child or whatever, uh, and the government forcing you to do it. And here you have the government coming in and saying, we're going to force this third party who had nothing to do with anything in San, San Bernardino. Uh, we're going to force you to do this. And if you believe Apple, they say, we don't have a backdoor. We would have to create it. That's a big step to tell a private company, you're going to have to work for us and you're going to have to do what we tell you. The motives, great motives. I, I wish they would do it. I wish Apple would do it. But that being said, I, I understand their argument when they say once we create that key uh, and it gets out, everybody is jeopardized and if, if you and even if it doesn't get right. out if do you trust the government right. so much after the irs scandal of targeting conservatives to give that's them that's a big kind part of, of this i mean the fact that a large part of this is uh, you may trust the government now you may not trust who's the next administration and the administration after that and i'm pretty sure no one wants anyone to have access to all the things they've said or done on their cell phones well look this is though what we've wanted and that's just from today this is what we've wanted the government to do they've they had a court order we know whose phone it is we know why we're looking at it this is, and regular law applies to this. If you have a special locksmith who put a lock on a door that only that locksmith can undo, and you know you've got Charles Manson behind that door and a thousand people he's going to kill, the locksmith saying, I'm worried about that guy's privacy when he's no, the well, only guy that he's can unlock He's saying he's worried about phone. everyone's no, privacy. He's no, saying no, no, everyone's no, got no, this. But that, that, that's a separate that argument. A false, that is a false that's concern. It would be saying, like, you can't ever issue a search warrant because some days everyone no, might be No, not at all. That's a, a separate search. argument. No, no, just a minute. Just, let me, let me <clears> have my <throat> say here. This is outrageous to me that you can have a court order. We know whose phone it is. They, all they want is to allow themselves to continue to look for the passcode without the phone erasing itself. They're not asking Apple to to break into it for them. They're asking them to stop the process that makes it a race. Yep. And, and this is like regular law. Right. They, know what they're, they know what they need to access. It does not put anyone else at risk, nor does it give the government access let me to go, everyone Let me else bring in law. Eric Erickson, because he did write an article today saying that he sides with Tim Cook. Why? Because the FBI for a while now has been pressuring Apple, in fact, has been pressuring lawmakers to change laws to require Apple to build into the iPhone a back door. Uh, the iPhone that the terrorists had was an iPhone 5C. It doesn't have the thumbprint. Uh, it just has the passcode. The FBI could go out and hire a hacker to figure out how to get into that phone, not Apple. The reason the FBI wants Apple to do it is because then they want to use it as a proof of concept to lawmakers to say, look, it's totally possible for Apple to do this. You Guys, should make them do this. I, I wish we started this segment early. I love and wish we can go on, but we're out of time.